Hi there. We're back looking at another past AQA A-level business question. This was a paper one question worth nine marks. And the question was, analyze the implications of these changes for Wilson PLC's cash levels. Wilson PLC? Well, that was just the name of the mini quesadilla that we were given for this question, which I'll show you in a second. And what they also gave us was some information in a table with two ratios, uh, both efficiency ratios. There was the receivables days and the payables days. So that is what the question was about. And to respond to this question, we need to consider the implications for the cash levels of Wilson as a consequence of changes in the ratios. So very clearly, this question required two responses, didn't it? Two paragraphs, two pieces of analysis in context, one dealing with receivables, one dealing with payables days. And we need to consider the implications, either positive or negative, increase or decrease for cash levels. Here was the information that was given to us. We were given a simple table for 2018 and 2019 receivables days increased from 30 to 45. Payables days also increased from 38 to 43. So what can we glean from this? Well, don't forget receivables days is the average time it takes for uh, customers to pay us. If we're Wilson, on average, 45 days where we've given our customers trade credit in 2019. Payables days, if we're Wilson, is the average time we take to pay our suppliers who give us trade credit. So 43 days on average uh, we took to pay our suppliers in 2019, up from 38 the year before. Well, all we need to do in our response to this question, therefore, is to, there, uh, is to provide the examiner with a simple analysis in context using that information to explain the impact, but potential impact on cash levels. So let's deal with receivables first. So the, the increase in receivables days indicates that Wilson's customers are taking longer on average to pay amounts owed to Wilson. Full stop. So we just need to explain how and why that might impact cash levels. Well, first of all, a bit of application. Receivables days have increased by 15 days on average, which is a 50% increase. All other things been equal, this will mean lower cash levels for Wilson as customers are delaying their payments to Wilson. Now, that would probably be enough, but you could also potentially develop this analysis further and say, well, however, it might be that overall sales and ultimately cash levels could increase if the increase in uh, receivables days is caused by Wilson allowing customers longer credit period, more trade credit in return for buying more from us. So actually, in the longer term, it could mean higher cash levels because we're selling more. Now, we don't know that, but that's one possible implication for cash levels. That's receivables days. Oh, just before we move on to payables, just a quick example there of how we can add a bit of application into our response. So I've just done two mini calculations. One is receivables days have increased by 15, and then I've snuck in a, a, a cheeky a percentage increase, which is also application, of course, manipulating data, a 50% increase. Okay, uh, what about payables days then? Well, same thing, really. The increase in payables days, what does it mean? Well, it means that Wilson is taking longer on average to pay amounts it owes to suppliers. So how and why? How does it, this impact cash levels? Well, payables days have increased by 15 days on average, which is a 39.5% average bit of application. All other things being equal, this means higher cash levels for Wilson. Why? Because suppliers are not being paid as quickly in 2019 as they were in 2018. Now, that will probably be enough. But again, there's another side to this. So I've just developed the analysis a little bit further. However, cash levels might eventually fall, not increase, if suppliers decide to reduce the amount of uh, credit they're prepared to offer partly because Wilson appear to be delaying payments. So you might, as a supplier, require Wilson to pay in cash rather than being given trade credit, which would actually mean lower cash levels. Now, again, we don't know, but that's a potential implication uh, for cash levels. And again, just quickly highlighting that a little bit of application. We just have to make sure we use that data in the table in our responses, and the examiner will be as happy as anyone to see the table being used to support the analysis. Hopefully that's useful for you. What do you think? Let me know in the comments if you found this video useful.